Hello, welcome to Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian. Here's our library bear, Bear. And uh, he has brought his bowl and spoon tonight. I told him that we were going to be reading a couple of books about food. We're just gonna prop that up there, Bear. You can help yourself whenever you want. And uh, he was so excited that he brought his own bowl. Well, our first story about food is called The Cook and the King. And this is written by Julia Donaldson and illustrated by David Roberts. The Cook and the King. Now this sign on the tree says, Wanted Royal Cook. Oh, and then we have some pots and pans and spoons and looks like somebody carrying things. Hmm, maybe even a box of pizza. Oh, King's Pizzas, it says. Here we go. There once was a very hungry king who need, needed a cook like anything. Oh, I wonder if this is gonna be a rhyming book. Hmm. So he tried out lots and lots of cooks with their pots and their pans and their how to cook books. I bet you were right. I'll stop. I'll try to stop and have you fill in the word. One by one, they cooked for the king. They cooked and they cooked like anything. But nothing they cooked was good enough. This egg is runny. This meat is tough. Too hot, too cold, too sour, too smelly. I don't want a sausage inside my jelly. This tastes all wrong, said the hungry king, and he frowned and he frowned like anything. But then he spotted another cook with feet that shuffled and hands that shook. My name, said the cook, is Wobbly Bob. I'm a bit of a wimp, but I'd love the job. The king thought hard, then he scratched his head. I fancy some fish and chips, he said. Yes, fish and chips is my favorite dish, but first you will need to catch the fish. Hmm. Help, said the cook. I'm feeling scared. I'd love to fish if I only dared but a shark might land in the fishing net, or I might get my nice new apron wet. My knees are knocking, the cook declared. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm terribly scared. I'll help you fish, said the hungry king. So he fished and he fished like anything. He caught some fish that were nice and big. Then he said to the cook, it's time to dig, yes, for the potatoes, right? For the fish and chips. Help, said the cook. I'm feeling scared. I'd love to dig if I only dared. But I'm scared of worms and I'm scared of ants. They might crawl into my nice new pants. My palms are sweating, the cook declared. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm terribly scared. I'll help you dig, said the hungry king. So he dug and he dug like anything. Then he said to the cook as he licked his lips, chop these potatoes into chips. Ooh, that's a wicked looking knife. Help, said the cook. I'm feeling scared. I'd love to chop if I only dared, but knives are sharp and I make it hurt. I might get blood on my nice new shirt. My heart is thumping, the cook declared. 
I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm terribly scared. I'll help you chop, said the hungry king. So he chopped and he chopped like anything. Then he said to the cook, who was standing by, out with the pan. It's time to fry. Oh my, help, said the cook, I'm feeling scared. I'd love to fry if I only dared, but oil can sputter and spit and splat. A drop might land on my nice new hat. My teeth are rattling, the cook declared. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm terribly scared. I'll help you fry, said the hungry king. So he fried and he fried like anything. Then he set the table and took a seat. And he said to the cook, it's time to eat. Good, said the cook. So the two men shared. What great cooking, the king declared. What well chopped chips and what well fried fish. All in all, a delicious dish. It tastes just right, said the full up king. And he smiled and he smiled like anything. Congratulations, Wobbly Bob. You may be a wimp, but you've got the job. Oh my goodness, I think that's the end. Oh, they're taking down the Royal Cook Wanted sign. Oh my goodness, wasn't that a silly king? He hired a cook, but he did the entire job himself. Well, that was The Cook and the King, written by Julia Donaldson and illustrated by David Roberts. I hope you enjoyed that rhyming story. How you doing over there, Bear? Well, we have one more story. And this is a story by Jim Aylesworth. It's called The Full Belly Bowl. And this story is illustrated by Wendy Anderson Halperin. The Full Belly Bowl. All right, I'm gonna shift my position a little bit so I can see the pictures better. In a tiny house at the edge of the forest, there once lived a very old man and a cat. The cat, whose name was Angelina, was white with patches of black, and the very old man thought that she was just about the sweetest cat in the whole world. On the day that this story begins, the very old man, hungry as usual, left Angelina on the sunny doorstep and went off into the forest in search of wild strawberries. He had not got, gone far when he heard the sound of a small voice in great distress. Let me go, yelled the voice. Let me go. At once, the very old man picked up a stick and ran toward the voice. In a small thicket of trees, he found a fox that had taken hold of a, very, of a wee small man and was trying to carry him away. Stop, shouted the very old man and he threw the stick, hitting the fox on the rump. Startled, the fox dropped his prey and ran off into the brush. The very old man could see that the wee small man was injured and needed some help, so he gently lifted him in his arms and carried him home. Once there, he bandaged the wee small man's leg and set about making him comfortable. He was curious, of course, about the wee small man and where he came from, but he was too polite to ask and the wee small man didn't say. Nevertheless, for the next three days, the very old man extended his guest every courtesy and shared generously from his meager pantry. He even mended the wee small man's torn vest. Each day, the wee small man grew stronger and the two of them got along very well. Then, on the morning of the fourth day, the wee small man was gone without a word. Hmm. A few days later, the very old man found a letter on the doorstep. It was held beneath the rim of an overturned bowl. 
The letter was so small that the very old man had to hold it with his fingertips. Dear friend, in appreciation of your kindness and generosity, I leave you this full belly bowl. You need never know hunger again. Use it wisely or it will be a burden. To empty, pour it out. When not in use, store upside down and out of reach of children. The letter wasn't signed. I bet you can guess who sent it though. Clearly the bowl was a gift from the wee small man, wherever he was, and it was intended to be used for food. Around the top of the bowl, there were words written in a language that the very old man had never seen. What on earth is a full belly bowl, wondered the very old man as he sat at the table with his cat Angelina. It was larger than the other bowls he owned and prettier too with decorations of flowers and mysterious birds. So that evening, the very old man prepared a stew and poured it into the full belly bowl. As usual, he began to eat. Yet after eating and eating and eating, the bowl was still as full as when he began. He ate and ate and ate some more, and still there was no change. Finally, he poured the stew out into another bowl for Angelina. At last, the full belly bowl was empty. But the very old man certainly wasn't, and neither was Angelina. She was used to catching mice for her dinner and had never had more than a scrap or two from the table in her entire life. Both had to lie down, and when they did, they fell asleep. The next evening, morning, the very old man was in for a big surprise. The house was completely gray with cobwebs. They were everywhere, hanging from the rafters, sagging between the pictures on the wall, covering the mantel, covering the cupboard, covering his chair. It looked as if he had been asleep for years and years instead of just a single night. Then he saw the spiders. One after another, they were streaming out of the full belly bowl. So it works with other things, thought the very old man. Quickly, he turned the bowl over and the parade of spiders stopped. The very old man spent the next weeks ridding the house of spiders and getting used to using the full belly bowl properly. He made many delightful discoveries. He found, for instance, that he could multiply a single strawberry by placing it in the bowl and then repeatedly removing the strawberries until he had a heaping mound, all plump and sweet. When he had enough, he poured the last one onto the pile and put the bowl away. Indeed, the very old man soon forgot the meaning of hunger. In fact, he began to put on a little weight. And what with all the extra food being given to her, so did Angelina. The very old man didn't forget the spider problem, however. And when he wasn't using the bowl, he turned it upside down and put it on the top shelf in the pantry. Sounds like a good out of the way place. Then one morning, he made another exciting discovery. He had finished breakfast and was returning the bowl to the pantry when a button popped off his vest. It landed in the full belly bowl. When he reached in and took it out, it was immediately replaced by another one in the same way that the spiders and the strawberries were. It made him wonder what would happen if he put a coin in the bowl. And though the only coin he had was a copper penny, he decided to give it a try. To his delight, it worked. Every time he took a coin from the bowl, he found that another had taken its place. The very old man spent the rest of the morning taking pennies from the bowl. He worked until his arm ached and the piles of pennies began to spill off onto the floor. It was then he realized that if he had a gold coin, he could put that into the bowl and, with the same small effort, make himself rich beyond his dreams. 
he decided to take the pennies to town and swap them for gold. His hands trembled with excitement as he swept the pennies off the table into an old flour sack. With the heavy sack slung over his shoulder, he closed the door behind him and, leaving Angelina napping on the doorstep, he set off for town. Unfortunately, the very old man had been so excited at the thought of becoming rich that he had forgotten to put the bowl away. And even worse, in the days before the bowl, Angelina had kept the house free of mice, but now, with so much other food around, she hadn't taken so much interest in them. And worst of all, one of the mice, a great big one, thought he smelled something good to eat in the full belly bowl and started climbing in the very old man's chair, which was right next to the table. While that mouse was climbing up his chair, the very old man was swapping his pennies for three $10 gold pieces. Right away, he put one of them to, in his pocket to save for the full belly bowl. With another, he bought a pair of boots and a fancy new vest with brass buttons. And since it was getting late and he was worn out from lugging that heavy sack of pennies, he decided to spend the third coin on a splendid dinner and a night's lodging in a comfortable hotel. Oh my goodness. We can only imagine what's happening at home. By noon the next day, the very old man was home again. And one look at Angelina with her nose pressed against the bottom of the door and her tail twitching was enough to tell him that there was something wrong inside. And sure enough, there was mice everywhere, great big ones. As fast as he could, the very old man made his way over to the table and dumped the last mouse out of the full belly bowl. Then he stood looking at Angelina. She was chasing around in a frenzy, doing her best, but not knowing which mouse to go after first. Thinking fast, the very old man picked her up, gently folded her legs, and set her down in the full belly bowl. As soon as he took his hands away, Angelina jumped out again. And just that fast, she was replaced by another cat that looked exactly like her. That cat jumped out to be replaced by a third and so on until the house was wild with black and white cats chasing hundreds of mice. Oh my goodness. What a situation. Very likely those cats would still be jumping out of that full belly bowl to this very day if one of them hadn't chased a mouse up onto the table and knocked the bowl onto the floor. It shattered to pieces. Still, the cats kept chasing after the mice, and by evening there wasn't a single mouse left in sight. Though relieved to be rid of the mice, the very old man was sad at first that the full belly bowl was broken. It had been nice not being hungry all the time, but it had caused a lot of trouble too. And except for all of the cats, life soon returned pretty much to normal. He never saw the wee small man again, and he never got another full belly bowl. He did keep that $10 gold piece, however, and he promised himself that he would be much more careful next time, if there ever was a next time. And because they never sat still long enough to be counted, he never found out how many cats there were, and he never found out which one was Angelina. But in the end, it really didn't matter much. The truth is, he loved them all. To him, they were just about the sweetest cats in the whole world. Well, that's the end of that story, The Full Belly Bowl, written by Jim Aylesworth and illustrated by Wendy Anderson Halperin. Well, I hope you enjoyed our stories about food. There, are you all done? Boy, wouldn't we like a dish of ice cream right about now? <laughs> I certainly would. Well, thank you for joining us at Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian. Goodbye until next time. <laughs>